Robert, what do these three applications we have just seen have in common? Um, at first glance, nothing, but in detail they do. In all three examples, the motors not only consume energy, but also operate regeneratively. Exactly, because during deceleration, they feed electrical energy back into the converters. What usually happens to this regenerative energy? Far too often, this energy is literally burned up in the form of heat, which is such a waste when there are applications available with almost 50% savings potential. We will show you which ones and how in this video. But let's look at the converter first. The regenerative energy increases the overall amount of energy and thus the voltage in the DC link. Since the voltage must not become too high and must always be within a defined range, the energy is often dissipated via a braking resistor. However, if regenerative energy is generated more frequently, it's definitely worthwhile making use of it. Yes, often in applications where regenerative energy occurs, motor energy is needed elsewhere at exactly the same time. So actually it makes sense to exchange that energy. But how does that work exactly? Instead of feeding the energy to a braking resistor, it is supplied to the motor that is currently demanding energy. A prerequisite, of course, is that the converters use a shared DC link. Exactly. On certain single axis drives, the DC link can be coupled. This is possible, for example, with the three phase Cinemics S210 devices. Our modular high end servo drive system Cinemics S120 uses a common DC link as standard, with the motor modules connected to a central infeed module, which allows them to exchange energy extremely effectively. This is typically the case with winders. For example, where the braking motor of the unwinder provides the energy for the winding drive. Or with storage and retrieval machines. Here the efficiency can often be increased even more. That is correct. Through intelligent optimization of the traversing profiles and their timing. For example, the regenerative phase of the travel gear can be synchronized with the acceleration phase of the hoisting gear. In this way, the energy of the travel gear is used for the hoisting movement. Energy savings of around 10% can be achieved through this optimization only. Siemens has extensive application know-how described and available in the form of application examples for storage and retrieval machines and many other applications. But what do we do if the next energy demand occurs with a time delay? In that case, we buffer the energy. There are basically two methods for this. Mechanically, for example, with a kinetic flywheel or electrically by increasing the storage capacity of the DC link. Different types of capacitive energy storage devices can be integrated directly into the DC link. When selecting the most effective buffer storage, it's crucial to take into account the dynamic requirement of the application, in addition to the amount of energy, meaning the capacity. Servo presses with their short-term power peaks, for example, require an excellent dynamic response. Kinetic storage units or capacitors with very fast charge and discharge cycles are suitable here. Capacitor modules are also used in storage and retrieval machines. The supercaps used have a large storage capacity in addition to a good dynamic response. If an even greater capacity is required with a lower dynamic response, large amounts of energy can be buffered cost-effectively over longer periods in battery modules. What are the benefits of all these concepts? Depends on the application. In the vast majority of cases, the total amount of energy consumed can be reduced. There are applications where only the power losses needs to be compensated. For engine test stands, for example, where energy savings of up to 80% are possible. But reduced peak load is also an important added value for customers. This reduces the infeed power including the connected load at the line side. One example, in the case of one particular storage and retrieval machine, through the additional capacity in the DC link, the connected power could be reduced from 160 to 65 kilowatts. Speaking of connected power and power utilities, there are also applications, of course, 
where it makes sense to feed back the regenerative energy into the grid. Various converters from the Synamic series can be used for that. Synamic's S120 active line modules can not only feed back energy, they also optimize the reactive power that is always generated when operating inductive loads or electric motors. Reactive power results in costly losses for both the operator and the energy supplier and must therefore be avoided. In most cases, prescribed limits must be also observed. With Synamic's S120 active lines modules, additional loads on the same mains connection can be included in the compensation. This means that an optimum power factor of cosinus phi equal to 1 can be achieved, which corresponds to a complete reactive power compensation. Okay, so we've presented the various concepts of energy management with Synamic's converters, but there's one more thing to find the most economic solution. Yes, engineering tools that support the life cycle from the very beginning. For example, I can use the tier selection tool to simulate and optimize the load cycles already during the planning phase. Based on that, the tool suggests the optimal and most energy efficient solution for my application. To sum it up, Drive Software from Siemens offers clever solutions for Dynamics converters to optimize the energy consumption.